I'm going to pray this over you right now, okay? And I just, you think about this. Um, plague is in there twice. Pestilence in here once. It goes against diseases. It goes against accidents. This has the ability to heal, as you'll hear in this sermon. Um, under the law, the Hebrew scholars uh, believe that if you said this seven times a day, it, nothing physically could touch you. Uh, Joseph Prince has preached that over the years at a 30,000 person congregation and said no one that's ever done this um, seven times a day is what he says. And I'm not trying to give you a formula or anything. He has never been touched by anything. This is, a, this is a powerful thing. It's called the prayer protection. Uh, it's Psalm 91. And let's just, I feel led to just say it right now. And, and, and what I'm going to do is it's going to be on the screens, but I, I personalize it. Um, yes. I personalize it for myself, and, but, but I'm going to try to do it over you. I usually say me um, because they dwell, because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Because you dwell there, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will say of the Lord, he is your refuge and your fortress, your God, and in him will you trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, those are traps, and the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under your wings, under his wings, shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your sides and 10,000 at your right hands, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, the Most High, your habitation. is your actual habitation your refuge. His, you, he is your refuge and your habitation. No evil can come near you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. He shall give your, his angels charge over you. They shall keep you in all your ways. In your path, I'm going to add this in for somebody, in your pathway is life and there is no death. There is no death. He shall give his angels charge over you. Okay, listen, they will bear you up in their hands even when you dash your feet against a stone. And this is all about demons here. This is all about stepping on demons. If you study it out, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under your feet because you have set your love upon him. This is God talking here. I always, I always say this like, okay, this is what you said. So I'm going to say it like you said it. Because I've set my love upon you, you are going to deliver me. Pay attention to this one. You are going to set me on high just because I know your name. I shall call upon you, and you're going to answer me. You're going to be with me in trouble. He's going to be with you in trouble. With you in trouble, he's going to deliver you. He's going to honor you. And with long life, he's going to satisfy you and show you his salvation because you've been so zoned. He's going to show you what being sozoed is. That's what we're going over. We're going to go over it today. We're going to go over it again the week after the Beviers are here. Good. Because next week, I forgot about that. Do you remember next week, you guys? We, um, remember what we did last week? We did six songs, right? Well, next week, we're going to do five songs, all right? And we're going to do, after two songs, Kristen's going to get up and... To talk for seven minutes exactly. No, just kidding. We don't know, and the Lord just kind of leads her. Then we're going to do two more songs. I'm going to get up. It will be for eight minutes, all right? And you will get preached to, all right? We're going to do one more song, then we're both going to get up, all right? But it's going to be the word or praise and worship infused with about 20 to 25 minutes of word, all right? And we can't say, you know, it's not an exact timing thing, but you will never stand more than 10 minutes. If you're thinking, oh, I gotta stand for an hour. No, you'll never stand more than 10 minutes. And you don't right? have to stand during the praise and worship either. No, you don't. You don't, that's, that's a misnomer. You don't, some of the best times I've had is when I'm focused 
on God sitting in my seat. So if you didn't experience this last week, come and experience it at all three services. Next week, this, these are not long services. They end on time. I needed to say that. I need to give you a heads up on that. Do you have anything you want to add? Well, I just want to say, I mean, I know that, that, that that's your that's your, your jive is to have an exact schedule, but do know we are going to be led by the Lord. If he leads in a different direction, we are making room for Holy Spirit to do whatever yes. he wants to do. As if I have a program. No, I, it's, I, it's our framework, and that's where we're, we're aiming for, but we are going to make room for the Holy exactly. Spirit. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, two weeks ago, I'm calling out spines, knees, necks. I'm just saying that wasn't in the plan. All right, and so yes, in that type of service where the word is infused with the music, and some of the teaching is on on music and the power that it has in your life on praise and worship. But let me just get started here. I've spent six minutes too long here. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're not going to see anything positive on the news. Matter of fact, if you watch it more than 10 minutes, you turn it off and you're, you're nervous. You're uneasy. It doesn't matter if it's Fox, CNN, MSNBC, CBS, all of them just make you, they peddle, they sell fear. And it's the same with social media. It's the same with even Christian media. They're never going to... Uh, uh, celebrate the fact on our local news at 10 o'clock that thousands of planes landed in the Minneapolis airport today safely. You're not going to ever hear that kind of stuff. And it's vital we don't let fear take root in our hearts. You can actually feed your heart on fear. If your mind is entangled with anxiety all the time, it's from your mental diet. It's what you have consciously or unconsciously been thinking about it uh, thinking about Psalm 91 1 because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High because you're in the secret place of the Most High what happens you then abide under the shadow of the Almighty and then you know I've this Hebrew word yeshab if we can put that on the screen means to sit down because you dwell the word for dwell because you sit down in the secret place is what that means. Because you, you, if you can sit down in that place, what it's saying to get the most out of God's protection for you is you have to be at rest. His protection, his love, and his peace have an easier flow into your life if you're in a place of rest. Dwell means to sit down. The Bible says we are seated with Christ, Ephesians 2, 6. He's raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places, in Christ. In Christ. If you're seated, it means you're not standing and you're working. Under the old covenant, the priest had to offer an animal sacrifice at 9 a.m. 9 a.m., got up, he did the sacrifice, and he stood for six straight hours until 3 p.m. when the afternoon or evening sacrifice was offered. This was to cover their sins cover their sins before Jesus died on the cross. What a coincidence. Jesus was crucified at 9 a.m. and he hung on the cross until 3 p.m. and in doing that, he fulfilled both of those morning and evening sacrifices. And so Hebrews 10, 11 and 12, furthermore, every, every human priest at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over again, they were never able to strip from every side of us the sins that envelop us and take them away. Whereas this one Christ, after he, after he offered a single sacrifice for our sins, that shall avail for all time, that covers all time. It covers your sins that you're going to commit 15 years from now. It's covered, past, present, and future. And then he sat down at the right hand of God. Because Jesus became the final sacrifice, the work of the priest is done. It no longer has to stand because Jesus cried at the cross, it is finished. We are seated in Christ. This was a, a phrase that was used a lot in the late 80s. 
valued more. It's all over the New Testament. In him, in Christ, in whom we're seated in the secret place of the Most High, a place of peace, safety, and security. Because of the blood Jesus gave that he bled for us, we have a right to every blessing that I just prayed over you in Psalm 91 because of the blood. And, and if we could look at he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, Psalm 91, one, that word most high is one of the names of God. Most high. It's called Elion. Elion is one of the names of God that he's given to himself because we sit down in the secret place of Elion. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A second name for God in that verse means Almighty. El Shaddai is one of his names. He calls himself Almighty. And, and you guys, this is really important. Can we go to Psalm 91:14 here so that you don't miss this? So that you don't miss this. Is it 14? Psalm 91:14. I'm throwing you a curve back there. Because he has set his love upon me. I always look at that one and say, in the, in the New Testament, it says, why, why do we love? Because it, that's God talking. And this is where God starts talking in this verse. Yeah. Because you have set your love upon him. But it's, why does it say in the New Testament that we love him? Because he, because he first loved us. So when I say this for myself, I say, because, yeah, I've set my love upon you, but you've set your love upon me. You're set your love upon me, therefore you will deliver me. And you're gonna set me on high, why? Just because I know your name. And it's not coincidental, 12 verses later it gives us four different names. Four different names. Elion, Elion and El Shaddai. El Shaddai, Almighty, God Almighty. Can we put that, is another name for God. Can we put that on the screen? So the two Hebrew names of God in the first verse, Elion and El Shaddai, Psalm 91.1. Yes, yes. Think about that. He's given us two names, God Almighty and Most High. Most. He calls himself the Most High. I don't think that's just like a cocky God. I think he knows he's the most high. I think that's saying something to call yourself almighty. You don't need to call me Jim Hammond. Just call me Jim Almighty. Jim Almighty. Man, I, only God, do you get what I'm saying, can say that. And so you've got these two names. And he'll set you on high just because he, you know his name. In ourselves, in our present challenges, may appear impossible. But when we are in a resting place of Elion, Most High, El Shaddai, God Almighty, we sit down. It's a secret place. Whose secret place? The Most High in the universe. And if you can sit down and abide under his shadow, we're actually living in the Almighty's shadow. I mean, you think about the shadow. I mean, Margie is in my shadow. Look how close. You have to be to be in someone's shadow. We're talking about financial situations, sleep disorders, depressive, suicidal thoughts. These verses can step all over this stuff. Yeah, and the thing to notice in the very beginning of this is just says, he who dwells, he who sits down. That's the first step. There isn't a step of, you know, he who finds his way to that seat and then sits down, then he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's no. He puts you in that secret place. When Jesus died on the cross, he brought you to that seat. And all he's telling you is sit down, sit down. And he did that because he wants to be close to you. He wants that intimacy. And so it's, it's all him. I know so many times we're thinking, okay, well, I just need to go. I just need to get into that secret place. No, just sit down and receive what Jesus did on the cross. Receive that rest and be close to him. You'll find these 16 verses cover every area of life that concerns you. You know, um, 
I pulled this sermon, really, I'm re, I meant this book called Prayer of Protection by Joseph Prince. He wrote a book called On Psalm 91 wow. by Joseph Prince. There's a testimonial letter in, on page six that someone in his church wrote to him. He's a pastor in Singapore with 30,000 people. Dear Pastor Prince, I want to share with you a testimony regarding my grandson, Kalen. Kalen was born three months premature, weighing one pound, seven ounces. Can you imagine? That's a baby, you know, probably that big. One pound, seven ounces. He was in the hospital six months while he was there. He had three surgical procedures. We were told his survival rate was going to be low. Even if he did survive, he would have had a significant development delays, developmental delays due to the extreme prematurity. So this is not just keeping a child, but this is already when things were bleak. At the time of the hospitalization, his mother was asked if there was a Bible verse that she wanted to be placed over her son's incubator. I guess they do that in hospitals in Singapore. Oh, that's nice. She gave them Psalm 91. I don't even know if my daughter had any idea of the power of putting Psalm, this, that Psalm above the incubator. I myself did not realize how powerful it was until later. Kalen had surgery for his heart once and two more for his stomach. He did well in all the surgeries. My grandson is now six years old with no developmental delays. He is advanced in almost every area, not behind in any way, having delayed developments in his mind or body. God took little Kalen into that secret place where he was safe and received his healing. I saw firsthand how the world could not harm him, and he is now a walking testimony of the power and the love of God. So the little baby, according to his mom, was taken to the secret place. Be careful of teaching out there that will make it sound like that you're going to bump in and out of that secret place or a, just a few elite Christians can go while the rest of us have no access because we haven't done enough. We can't get to the secret place because we haven't prayed three hours or today or we haven't read our Bible for two hours. A person that teaches along these lines is trying to say there is a standard of holiness you must have in order to obtain before you can reach that secret place, therefore before you can be protected. There's nothing more wrong. And I, can I give you my opinion? Some big time ministers that have much more influence than myself are preaching about the umbrella of protection. And I'm so annoyed by that. Because that would say that you, oh, yeah, you've, he's protecting you with your little umbrella. You are protected. And then when you sin, you step out from under the umbrella and you get back right with God and you're back under the umbrella. So I guess when you sin, when you worry, you're not under the umbrella. When you speed and do 75 and a 55 and break the laws of the land because that's a sin, you are now not under the umbrella. When you go eat two plates of nachos at El Rodeo, you are now not under the umbrella because you have committed the sin of gluttony. When you do these things, when you have worry in your mind, and yes, fear is a form of worry, and I can show you in Revelation, where fear is sin, you're out from under the umbrella. Uh, I mean, we're, that, that's the law. You did bad things. If you made mistakes under the law, no protection. Saul disobeyed God. God allowed the devil to put it on him. So what's the difference? Jesus died on the cross for what then? For what? There's no difference. I don't believe it. And I think that's why people get in trouble, because they, they don't have faith that what Jesus did on the cross will protect them. Yep. And they can take this and walk in it because they are in Christ right now. Have you asked Jesus into your heart? You are officially in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are in the secret place. And so. Because the old <sighs> man is dead. You are a new creation. Yes. And, 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 you know, if it takes three hours of prayer to get in the secret place, what if someone works 10 hours, 
five or six days a week, has three kids at home, and they, gotta, they get, get those three hours of prayer, they're not gonna get in a secret place. No, the Lord's blessing is not just for that kind of person. If a blessing is from our Lord, everyone has access to it. All have access by faith. Romans 5, 2. If you believe through him, we have access. Introduction. By believing, by faith, into what? Grace. What's that? Favor you don't deserve? Just by believing, you have access into favor. It says a state of God's favor that you're firmly and safely standing. It says in Romans chapter 8, it says, He who did not spare his only son, but gave him up for us all, so he could freely give us all other things. Did he say freely? He said freely. I think he said freely. I, th I, th I think you don't have to earn the secret place. You don't have to earn it. Yeah, I think some of the biggest key <sighs> is... What, <laughs> it's okay. I just got to settle down. I'm it's sorry. Okay. Just it's okay. Me. It's just okay. Me. It is good. It is good. But that believing, that believing, sometimes people put the pressure on the believing. I just got to believe more. I got to believe more. But it's the faith. Faith works by love. When you know that you are loved, that's when your faith works. That's when he can do anything. When it's, you can receive, you can rest, because you know that you're loved. So that, I just wanted to back that up. You back that up, yeah. girl. <laughs> okay. Do you guys remember how Noah was in the ark? He was safe in the ark. And this is how you read the Old Testament. This is, this is how Jesus, when he described on the road to Aramaeus, there wasn't a New Testament written yet. He came back after he was raised. The disciples didn't recognize him because he's in his glorified body. He's walking. It's a seven-mile walk. He walks with them, and he's describing, the Bible says, he describes of things concerning himself in the Old Testament. He's, he's talking about because the New Testament wasn't written. And so this is what we're talking about. That was Noah was safe in the ark when the floodwaters came. Noah was not perfect. Noah was not under the Ten Commandments. He had his own covenant, which I don't have time to talk about. But in Genesis 6, 8, it said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And it says um, after Noah had seen God miraculously save his life, his family's life, and a male and female of every animal on earth, every species of animal. Think about this. Think about this. He's, God instructs him how to build this thing. He doesn't even know what it's for because they've never even seen rain. What are, what are you building, Noah? I don't know. What's it for? Rain. <laughs> he doesn't know. After all that protection, after seeing all that, Genesis 9, 21, Noah got off the ark, he drank the, of the wine and was drunk, and got so drunk, it says he was completely naked in his tent. So he, so, I mean, how'd he get the wine? He had to ferment it on the ark. Doesn't it take time? So he was planning it as he was being protected. Noah had the honor of being the first drunk man ever on record in the Bible. And because he got drunk and wound up sleeping in his tent with no clothes on, Genesis 9.22, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren. He caused his son Ham to break the law of parental authority, and Ham's brethren and his descendants were cursed all the way up to where Jesus died on the cross. Do you know it, Jesus broke generational curses? It's ridiculous to say, I think generational curse. Well, then you believe it, you get it. You believe in generational curses, then you're going to get it. He broke it. But in the new covenant, what we call the New Testament, which means you have a new contract that you have with God sitting right there in your seat. Hebrews 11:7 7 says, call it the Faith Hall of Fame, Hebrews 11, after getting off the boat for months, completely protected, and getting wasted, God says, 
By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world, and became heir, uh, became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Same with David. David committed adultery and murder, should have been stoned twice under the law. Not a, not a, not a negative word minute mentioned about David. Not a negative word mentioned about Abraham, who lied twice about who his wife was. She winds up in a harem. Then God says, I'm going to give you a child. He wants to help God out with his own self-effort, sleeps with his slave, has a child with his slave. None of that is about Abraham. It's always by faith, by faith. Rahab, Rahab was a prostitute. Doesn't mention that. It just talks about these people's exploits. Why? Because this is the new covenant. And I believe that all of those, by faith, they're, they, it was at work because of the love that they had. Like Noah, it said that Noah walked with God. We can read the Psalms, and we know that David walked with God. He was a man after God's own heart. Abraham walked with God. And the walking with God gets to be, you know, a hang-up with people. I mean, it's like you almost, like, judge. You talk about somebody like, oh, they're really walking with the Lord based on like how much they're sinning or whatever, whatever you see in their life. But walking with God is a positioning of your heart and it's the secret place that he puts you in. Um, Song of Solomon is my favorite book in the whole Bible because it's such a, a good imagery of his pursuit of that love and that intimate relationship with us. And um, chapter two, Song of Solomon two, verse 14. What, what version is that? That's this the, is um, The Passion. The Passion version, okay. Yeah. Um, this book is an amazing book. It's called The Sacred Journey. It was written by the gentleman who did the Passion translation, um, Brian Simmons. And it just goes through Song of Solomon, and it just tells you the whole story and kind of breaks down each verse and what it means. Because sometimes, I remember growing up in church, and I mean, we were almost like told, don't read Song of Solomon, you know, because it's just like it's stuff. It's perverted. Yeah, it's perverted. <laughs> but, That's what um, we were told. Seriously. That's what you're told in the 80s. Yeah. But it is the most beautiful book in the world when you understand what it is, and it's just the picture of his love for you. Um, chapter 2, though. So this is Jesus speaking to us, his bride. He says, For you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. See, he hid us. When, he died, when Jesus died on the cross, he put us in him, and he hid us. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. So his purpose in bringing us there is to have that intimate relationship and where it's just a looking of our eyes and it's a speaking of our voice. That's his desire. He wants us there so that we can speak to him. We can hear. And this whole chapter of Psalm 91, I um, another image thing though, but I picture Jesus is like my great big bird. He's like a great big eagle, and I am under his wings. And that's one of the verses, too. You're under his wings, and you think of how close you are and how you can hear his heartbeat. And, you know, I'm not going to be sitting there telling my, you know, Jesus, like, okay, this is what I want to eat today. You go get that for me. He knows what I need, and he will bring it to me. He will show me things, and I can hear his voice. I can be led by him, and I'm in that safe and secret place. And so that is, read Song of Solomon, I dare you. In the Passion, it's amazing because it gives you a little more demonstration of it, but that's the intimate relationship he has. That's the secret place. And, you know, I mean, interesting, that's an interesting scripture that you gave. He's alluding to the secret place. And when the flood came, though, with everyone outside the ark died. But Noah and his family were protected, and they were saved. You could say they were saved because they were in the ark, which is a type of Christ, who is our salvation. Literally, the whole world died, and Noah was saved. The ark is a type of Christ. If you read how the ark was constructed, constructed it didn't have windows on the sides. It sat real high in the water. The only windows were near the roof which sat high above the sea. The truth is, God didn't want them to focus on all the darkness, terror, and evil that was around them. So he didn't put windows where they could see. That's why he didn't put windows there. The earth flooded. The seas and oceans had to have been treacherous. 
just awful. I'm sure there were times when Noah or his family members in taking care of all those animals might have lost their balance, fallen as the storm waters crashed into the ark. But Noah and his family members, if they fell, they fell where? In the ark. They never fell out of the ark. You never fall out of Christ. You fall in Christ. If you fall, you fall within from Christ within. He, your sins have been forgiven past, present, and future. The new covenant reads in Hebrews two different times. It's called the covenant I wills. The Ten Commandments were thou shalt, thou shalt. It was on you. It was all on you and impossible to fulfill. No one until Jesus Christ was able to fulfill it. But the new covenant is I will. I will do this. I will do that. I will do that. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe that, my, that your sins and iniquities I'm going to have mercy on and your lawless deeds of unrighteousness, I am not going to remember. That's what it says. Nobody ever preaches that. That's your covenant. That your mistakes, he's gonna have mercy on, he's not even gonna remember your lawless deeds of unrighteousness. And so, they didn't fall out of the ark. You do not fall out of your position in Christ. You're still in Christ. A, a, a believer in the new covenant having Jesus in their hearts doesn't fall out of righteousness. Romans 5, 17, for by one man's offense, Adam blew it. Death reigned. Much more. They which receive. You have to receive it. And in the Greek tense, it's constant. Not just once. No, you have it. An abundance of grace. That's favor you don't deserve. That's blessing that you don't deserve. If you can receive that. And the gift of righteousness. It's a gift that was given to you. You have to receive the gift. Oh, you, you drove 90 and a 55. Give me the gift. Umbrella off. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're out, you're, you're, you're out of the will of God. No, it's a gift. How many of you have given your child a gift and said, give me back that gift? I would say, give me, no, you give him the gift. He gave us a gift of the righteousness of God. What is that? It's how God viewed Jesus. That's why the Bible says you are complete in him. You are, present tense, complete in him. He views you like he viewed Jesus. That, because your sins, he doesn't even remember. And so Jesus took our sins on the cross, died with them, and gave us his righteousness. It's as a gift. So you don't, it's not something that you, you step in and out of. You don't lose it. It's a gift. This means even though we fail because we're imperfect human beings, we are still in Christ, our ark, and we do not forfeit his blessings of protection, the blessings of Psalm 91. Eventually and over time, the revelation of our righteousness in Christ will produce right living. When you start to value this, this being in Christ, in the secret place, is when your outward circumstances start to change. In Christ is the secret place of the Father's care, protection, and love. What do I mean by valuing? Let's say I gave you a, an old looking beat up baseball glove. Isn't this beautiful, Pastor Paul? He would say, no, that's not very beautiful. Well, Derek Jeter wore this for five years every game he played in. Mickey Mantle or, or Willie Mays, they, they wore this. Well, then it would suddenly change its value in your eyes. Right, right. That glove would have a different kind of value. And that's what I'm talking about in regards to being in Christ and valuing being in Christ. Where we have his loving presence constantly with us, watching over us, pr protecting us. I encourage you to keep hearing preaching that reveals who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. Keep hearing grace-based teaching on God's promises. And the next time you hear about the umbrella of protection, yeah. think to yourself, 
Well, does it come off of you, sir, when you, if you speed? Do you do 55 and a 55? <laughs> We're just talking about technical sins according to the Bible under the law. Yeah. Technical sins. There's, there's no sin scale. You're, you either sinned or you didn't. You either broke the law or you didn't. And once you broke the law, you broke it all. You want to live like that? Because I'm, I'm just saying, so think about that. It's, it's okay that people believe differently. If you want to believe like that and live under that kind of pressure, you go ahead. But I, I, I contest your life is in danger because you don't feel, you don't have confidence in being protected by this Psalm that protects every area of your life. It causes you to value being in the secret place more. You'll find your heart and mind more and more at rest with him. The more confident of his tender care, protection, and preservation you are, you'll have hope instead of worry and fear. You'll see him deliver you and protect you from whatever the enemy may throw at you. Psalm 91.1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This speaks of intimacy with God. The secret place, being under the shadow, you have to be close to that object. You know, just in Israel, at the Mount of Beatitudes, you, you stand in the sun under, and the, it's 10 degrees cooler if you step under the shadow of a tree. I mean, it's like, you heat up, you step in the shadow, it's actually nice. It's almost undoable if you're not in the shadow of a tree. If you have these three things, you're probably going to be at rest more than often. Intimacy, uh, closeness, and protection. More often than not, if you have that, the secret place of the Most High, it's not a geographical location, it's spiritual intimacy. The prayer protection is not some kind of magic chant. It's you valuing what you are in Christ. And another testimony out of the Joseph Prince's book, Prayer Protection. Some years ago, I received, and a little is commentary after the testimony. Some years ago, I received a testimony of divine protection from a businessman who attended our church. He'd been on a business trip and was staying at the Marriott Hotel in Jakarta, Indonesia. While he was in the lobby of the hotel, he suddenly heard a loud explosion. A bomb had been detonated right outside, and it tore through the lobby of the hotel. The blast was so powerful, he saw a body fly right past him. After the dust had settled, he checked himself, realized that all his, although his shirt was spattered with other people's blood, and he had debris all over his shirt, he was completely unharmed. He had stepped behind a pillar at the very moment the bomb went off. And that pillar had shielded him from the direct impact. Walked past it a, mere, a second earlier, a second later, he would have died. Just happened to step behind the, the pillar. With all our intelligence, all our smarts, only our Lord Jesus can put us in the right place at the right time to keep us in his divine protection. Look at, the, look at this verse, Ecclesiastes 9.11. Look at that, 9.11 now. 9.11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to us all. Time and chance. He can put you in the right place at the right time. This is Joseph Prince talking. For more than a decade, I've been teaching my church to declare Psalm 91 over themselves and their loved ones. I believe what happened to that brother in Jakarta was the power of the prayer of protection at work. The Lord has put a word in my heart for the times we're living in. That word is protection. I want to show you from the Bible what Jesus died to give you in the area of protection. Even as I, as I write this book, the Lord is commissioning me to preach strongly on Psalm 91 so that you can walk in his divine protection in these last days. Psalm 91 has just 16 verses loaded with potent promises we stand on. 
And the enemy, he's going to point to your circumstances and say, well, why is your child sick? Where's Psalm 91? And at that moment, you have a choice. You can either back away from God's word, agree with the enemy, or you can stand in faith and continue to believe. Now, I know there's people in this room that have had claimed these promises before and it didn't work for them. And I want to encourage you to hold on to this word. Hold it to your life. Whatever your experience has been, the word of God stands eternal and unshakable. If you have not received the full protection in the past, you have to hold on to it in perseverance and in faith. And you walk more and more in that total protection. Um. What? <laughs> Well, there was just like a couple things that came up they're, that I was thinking kinda... about. Um, well, like with the with this Psalm 91, I love this this word so much. This prayer of protection. There's so much power in it. Um, but I think the key in it is in those very first verses that you know, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. That is like the number one thing, and I think that's why we're praying it because we need to be in that place. We need to be in that closeness where we're hearing. Um, you know, what the, what the Father's saying, what the Spirit has for us. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to find different language because I feel like it's so Christianese and it's like sometimes things we're just not even really thinking about. We just hear the words and we're like, oh, that's whatever. But there is just a, an acknowledging of the Spirit. Because Bill Johnson says, what kind of father would he be if he whispered something to us from across the room and then disciplined us for not hearing it? It is his responsibility to be heard, and he's always speaking, and he says that we are his sheep, and we will know his voice. The word says that. We will know his voice, but sometimes we're so distracted, and we're so caught up in fear because it's fear or love. You're either, either motivated by fear or you're motivated by love. That's it, and so when we're in fear, we're not hearing anything that the Lord has to say. We're not hearing the voice of our shepherd. And so that's what the key is, is being at rest, sitting in this place with him where you can be led. Because there are times where you've got your treasure of, of scripture in you. You know all your weapons, you know, that when sickness comes, this is what I confess. And when, you know, danger comes, this is what I confess. But there are times where it might be something completely different, something out of your wheelhouse that he wants you to declare in that moment. And so if you're just doing it on your own, if you're just a little bird and you're just gonna jump out of your nest and do it your own way, you know, it's, it's I don't know, and I'm not crosswising what you're saying about the umbrella protection at all, but I'm just saying that there are times where um, the easiest thing and the best thing is when you, you have what the Spirit is saying for that moment, when he has a weapon that you didn't even know was there, but there's something in the Word, and he'll be saying, do this, say this, because that's the thing in, in um, Song of Solomon's too, where he, he needs you to be looking at him. He needs your voice. He needs your eyes. Um, listen, you guys. <laughs> um, I've traveled to Indonesia, I don't know, 55 times, and... Something happened one time where I had a head cold because my nose was just blocked and I sat somewhere. It got really, really hot and I started thinking about um, uh, the thoughts I was thinking is you're breathing everybody else's breath. I was sitting in the plane. I mean, the plane had me taken out and I'm breathing every breath. All their breath goes in me. All their breath goes out of me. And so I'm like meditating on this, right? And I started to like have like a freak out. And the next thing you know, the plane is taking off and I'm back in the very back of the plane. You know how there's cracks around the exit doors that are big? And if you spend a lot of time in planes, there's air coming out of the cracks, cold air. And I was doing this. Just try to keep from freaking out. I think it was some kind of panic attack. I just got in my head, right? And the stewardess, sir, you have to sit down. We are taking off. You don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm having problems here. And so, 
It was the weirdest thing. And it fl probably went to Indonesia another 30 or 40 times, and that same thing hit me. And I felt it coming. I felt it coming. And, and so, but you know what? I just, I knew enough. I just sat there. And it's usually, it, it, both times it was in the middle seat where bigger people were next to me, and I just felt real, <laughs> real crowded. Like they're just right there, right there, right there. 24 hour flight. You know. And it just, it just got in my head. No, because he dwells, and because, because I dwell in the secret place, the secret place. Other people say the secret place of the Most High. It's the only thing that settled me. It settled me. I, I won. He won because I started to use it. And I know it sounds ridiculous. You know, um, John 16, 33, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I overcome the world. This is God declaring he will deliver us from troubles. That means we're going to see some trouble here and there. And the more you hear preaching on Psalm 91, the more you quote it, the more you remind yourself of its protection, the more our faith in his protection grows. Why? Romans 10, 17. It really means faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. The real word is Christ. The word of Christ. In other words, referring to new covenants. We're going to get deeper into this psalm later in later weeks, and deliverance from troubles is great, but there's actually a promise that's even greater. It talks about you getting to a place in your life where no evil can touch you in this psalm. Very clearly it does. Psalm 91, 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. On him do I lean and rely, and in him do I confidently trust. Confidently. How does that start out? I will say of the Lord. What are you saying of the Lord? What are you saying of the Lord? You know, just going to the screens real quick. The word for refuge. He is my refuge, and he is my fortress. Refuge is there's your, there's your Hebrew word refers to a shelter from storms and danger. You know, it's comparable to the bunkers that the, is, that the Jews today, have. if they build a house, it's a requirement that they build a, a, a bomb shelter in the home to protect themselves from the thousands of Qassam rockets thrown at them every year from the Gaza Strip. Well, I can imagine as they're sitting in their shelters, you could say they were hoping that they would be protected from violence. When you say the Lord is my refuge, you are declaring he is your place of hope. Amen. That's right. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Fortress in the Hebrew means a castle or a stronghold, if we could put that up. A place of defense and protection against large scale attacks. But it covers it all. It's a, it's a refuge and it's a fortress. God is not distant. Sometimes we're just too distracted to hear his voice or sense his presence. Sometimes you have to take a moment and see yourself in the secret place. I, I, I bet our, all our secret places would look different. Take a moment and abide under his shadow. Have you ever taken a moment to actually see his favor surrounding you? Yes. See his, if you can have bad imaginations, you can have good ones because God created your imagination. <laughs> Says in Hebrews 13, five, I will never leave thee and forsake thee. You know what that means in the Greek? I will never ever leave you. Never, ever leave you. Feeling 
uh, of, be, of being distant from God is only a feeling. He hasn't left. He says, I'll never leave you if we could put the picture of Jesus up. Jesus paid for you to have access to his presence. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because <laughs> God turned his back on him. Why? Jesus was taking our place and was rejected by God because when he carried our sins so that today we can take his place and being in constant presence with the Father and have the Father as our refuge and our fortress. If you take the time to do it, you can picture and imagine and sense his shadow covering you. You're not trying to get into the secret place. You're already there. God would only show Moses his back. In the old covenant, because of man's failure, God was always departing, and the children of Israel only saw his back. The new covenant is God sending his only son. It is a picture of the father running towards the prodigal son in spite of his failures. Under the new covenant, we're seated with our heavenly father in Christ. You should imagine him smiling on you as you sit in his shadow. This is how close you are to him. Even if your feelings tell you God is a million miles away, he's not. The New Testament name that he gives for God is Father. I read in that book, uh, Prayer Protection. You know, I said, sometimes you have to just say the word Father, Father. Let him touch your, your soul, Father. Not, not your own Father. There, there, there's probably good fathers in here, but they cannot compare to him as a father. You know, trust does not mean there won't be butterflies in your stomach. Trust means that even though you're nervous, you still act on his word. Whatever is you're afraid of doing, do it afraid while you keep your trust in the Lord. It's okay to do it afraid. <laughs> There are people who are afraid to leave their houses, fly in planes, pursue new careers, start new friendships, volunteer in ministry, get involved in a small group, or even show up for work the next day. Don't allow worry to dictate your life. When you say to the Lord, in you I trust. Let's look at this. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I will say of the Lord. That first word is another name. Yahweh. Holiest name of God. You know what that word means? Yahweh. The covenant keeping God. I will say of the covenant keeping God. This is the holiest name of the Lord. And the Jewish scribes treat this name with great reverence. I think a lot of them don't, won't even say it. They won't even say it. Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua, actually means Yahweh saves. The covenant keeping God saves. Yeah, in the Old Testament, over and over and over and over and again, they talk about He is the God that keeps covenants and mercy. He keeps covenants because, yes, He keeps His promises but he is full of mercy because he knows that we are, we need the mercy. Yes. We do. Yes. And so those go together over, I dare you to look them up over and over. Covenant keeping God full of mercy. Mercy is when you don't get the bad things you have coming to you. That's the definition of mercy. And our covenant is a covenant of mercy that we have with him. And it's, it's his covenant. He, it doesn't mean the covenant keeping God judges. It means, Yah, Yeshua means the covenant keeping God saves. If you're broke, he saves. If you're sick, he saves. If you have enemies coming against you, he saves. Whatever you're sa saving you need, he is the answer. Psalm 91, 2, my God and in him do I trust. Two names here. Pay attention to these names. Elohim. Elohim, you can put Psalm 91 2 up. We're closing right here with this. 
I will say of the Lord, that word is, I will say of the Lord, the God of power. I skipped something here. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Elohim, my God, God of power, the creator, the God who created the heavens and the earth. This is the definition of this Hebrew name. These are names God has given himself. Now, knowing the different names of God used by the psalmist, let's read verses 1 and 2 together. You guys ready for this? We're closing with this. Keeping in mind... Quickly, Psalm 91, 14, because he has set his love upon me, because I have set his love upon him. Therefore, he will deliver me and set me on high. Because why? Because, because why? Because I know his name. Just because I know his name. Well, here's his name. You ready? Let's put that on the screens. The, um, with the, with the, here, let's read it together. He who dwells in the secret place of Elion, the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of Shaddai, God Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, God of power, creator. In him will I trust. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so He sets you on high. He delivers you because you know his name, just because you know his name. We just went over four of them. He said he's gonna deliver you and he's gonna rescue you and he's gonna set you on high. And so now we're gonna go ahead and close here. Yeah, and it's, it's a matter of resting in it. That is the, such a huge theme of this, of this uh, um, prayer of protection. It's resting, you know, it's not, okay, um, being aggressive and, and having to fight it's rest you sit down and you rest and you know who god is he is the most high he is the covenant keeping god he will protect me from this you know i mean it's like all of this i'm resting in this so he says the battle is his i've got a new t-shirt it says the battle is the lord's and i'm all for that i'm going to let him fight all my battles <laughs> um you know and what we've been talking about today is is him revealing all of this by his love we are loved like nothing else and you know for anyone that maybe doesn't fully understand that we are going to extend an invitation to you today that you would come to know and have a personal relationship with this god who loves you so much that he gave his son it is not just a verse that you see you know thrown about with no meaning it is the gospel jesus died for you because the heavenly father loved you so much and he wants to protect you and guide you through life and give you everything that you need and so if there's anyone in here today that doesn't know that love of the heavenly father i'm just going to invite you to welcome him into your heart today um we're going to have everybody bow your heads close your eyes this is just us with the lord right now nobody's looking but if you've never received this love, if you've never known this love, I just ask you to raise your hand. We're just gonna pray with you. This love that surpasses anything that you've ever known on earth. This is receiving Jesus into your heart so that he can love you in everything that you do. He died that you could have life to the fullest. He sees everything that we think, everything that we do. He knows where our hearts are and he doesn't care. He says, I choose you, I love you. And I wanna pour my love into you. Is there anyone in here today that would like to receive that love? Just raise your hand, raise your hand. All right, I see that hand. He's got one in the balcony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
All right. We're just going to pray together. We're going to have everybody say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that you gave him. I believe you gave him. Because you love me so much. Because you love me so much. And I believe that we will walk out today. I believe we will walk out today. You in my heart. You in my heart. You protecting me. You protecting me. You revealing yourself to me. You revealing yourself to me. I thank you that my life is changed today. I thank you my life has changed today. And I thank you that I will spend eternity with you. I thank you that I will spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for staying a little bit later today. Um, can we throw Psalm 91 up real quick? And I just, I know it's, go, let's, can we just say this together? Yeah. With knowing about the names, and there's so much in between, and we're just going to slowly knock this out over the summer, okay, as we get the chance. And so verse by verse, you ready? We can just say it exactly how it reads. We can personalize it and all that later. It doesn't really matter if you personalize it. It has the same power if you just say it how it reads. Ready? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Lord. Just, we're just trying to get this in you, get you to understand there is so much in there. I just wanted to give so much away today. I'm sorry this, if this one seemed choppy. It seemed, for some reason, it's hard to tell up here, but I think you got the point. Did you not? Did you get the point? And I just, I really want to thank my parents for allowing us to be here. Remember, next week, all right, is, is, is a little bit more praise and worship. You're still getting word, and you're not standing the whole service. Please come back. Uh, the week after that is the Beviers with John and Lisa starting on Friday night. God bless you guys. We love you guys. Have an awesome weekend. Wow, wasn't that a good word today? We pray what God deposited into your heart will continue to grow and bring increase and change to every part of your life. Now, as you experience breakthrough and answered prayers, reach out to us. We'd love hearing about the good things God is doing in our online family. You can send us a quick email by clicking the contact tab right there in the lower right part of your screen. Also, we wanna say thank you for your faithful generosity. Your tithes and offerings are being used to plant the seed of God's word into the hearts and lives of people each week. Together, we're delivering hope to the world and bringing increase to God's kingdom one life at a time. Thank you for worshiping and honoring God in your giving. Also, if you've been attending church online for a while now and are interested in becoming an online member or perhaps getting involved as one of our hosts, we'd like to hear from you. 
This is a great opportunity to grow spiritually and take steps in God's plan for your life. To learn more, you can comment in chat or by sending us an email to let us know you're interested. Okay, we're out of time for today. Thank you again for being with us. We hope that you enjoy a peaceful and blessed week. Until next time, remember we love you, we're praying for you, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless.